Today we're going to talk about the Sigma 30mm f1.4. So let's do this. What's up YouTube? Before I get into today's video, I did want to take care of some housekeeping. Late last Tuesday, I actually posted a video challenge for those of us that are kind of stuck at home right now, practicing social distancing. Uh, and so if you're feeling a little bit stir crazy, check out that video and I'll put a link up here in the corner to see what the rules are. And what I'm gonna do is at the end of my video where my bloopers normally go, I'm actually gonna replace that with any entries from that week. So again, if you're a filmmaker or videographer and you're feeling a little bit stir crazy, go check out that challenge. We're all here, we're a community. Let's help each other get through this thing, this crazy time. So definitely check it out make this happen. So with that being said, let's get into this topic talking about the Sigma 30 millimeter F1.4. Last week I posted a video about the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 and this is a continuation of that series. Hopefully next week I'll also be posting the 56 millimeter as well. So stay tuned for that. Now the 30 and the 56 I do have for Sony E-mount. So I have it mounted on my A6000 now, which as a side note, this is what I need to take these off. This is what this lens looks like mounted on the A6000, which the form factor for Sony crop sensor cameras hasn't really changed since the A6000. The other things I do wanna make clear before I get into my pros and cons about this lens is again, this is a crop sensor lens. And so while you can potentially mount it on the A7 III or the A7S II or any Sony full frame camera, it will not cover the full sensor. And also, like I said, this is the Sony version of this lens, but they do make a micro four thirds version as well as now they do offer a Canon EOS M version. I do want to mention I was sent this lens by Sigma, but Sigma does not require me to say anything specifically about this lens. And so I'm going to give you my unbiased opinion when it comes to how I feel about this lens. So with that being said, let's get into my pros and cons about this lens. Let's start with the first pro, which is very similar to the 16 millimeter is the focal length simply because f1.4 creates such good separation and i could probably say that this actually offers a little bit more of a cinematic vibe than the 16 millimeter because it's more of a natural focal length it's natural to the human eye and what that does for me is it creates not necessarily isolation with the background but isolation with things that are surrounding it so you're way more focused on your subject or your talent. So this having good shallow depth of field and with that 30 millimeter focal length just really creates a really, really pleasing image. And with that, obviously it's also really good in low light. I did a couple shots where I was inside my house and so there was not a ton of light. I worked all off of natural light. I didn't have a ton of studio lights in those scenarios. And so having this F1.4 really helped with that. The second pro for me is image quality. The sharpness that comes from this lens corner to corner is amazing just like it was with the 16 millimeter and like i said i fully expect that out of the 56 millimeter so the sharpness the overall color reproduction is just really great out of this lens and so this can really be used on any corporate gig you might have just because of the overall image quality that this lens produces so that is a huge pro for me is the overall image quality the next pro for me is the size and i'll bring this up here again i really like this size. Now, some people have said that the Sigma lenses are really big. Yes, while that is true, I like this size. One is for the fact if I'm using this for video work, it adds more bulk to the camera. A few months ago, I talked about creating stable video. And one thing that you can do to create more stable video is to have a heavier rig. And so this helps your rig be a little bit heavier so that you're not walking around with a lens that's super tiny and weighs nothing, which can cause more micro jitters. So this size is, I actually really like it. Um, it's a little bit bigger than even the Sony native glass, but still, I'm a huge fan of the size. It creates a little bit bulk, and I think it's just the perfect size on the Sony APS-C systems. But now we have the return of one of my favorite pros, and that is price. When I was doing my research, I was fully expecting this lens to be at least $350 to $400, kind of like the 16 millimeter. But when I looked, for Sony, at the time of filming, this lens is $270. And that immediately made these features go from like, oh, those are really awesome, cool features, cool specs, to this is an amazing lens to consider if you're on a budget. This was the lens that I was least excited to talk about. But when I saw the price, that's when I got really excited about this lens. All these good qualities about this lens 
for that price of 270 and I think for Micro Four Thirds, it might be a little bit more. It kind of fluctuates what mount you get it for, but around $270, $280, you can pick up this lens. So that was actually the biggest pro for me was the price tag on this lens. So with that, I am gonna have almost the same exact cons I have for the 16 millimeter. So first one, focus by freaking wire. I hate focus by wire. It is just, it drives me nuts. As somebody that loves to manually focus my shots, focus by wire is like my own personal hell. And I know that's extreme, but it's a thing. And so that is the biggest con for me is focus by wire. I feel like the focus ring is a little bit more stiff than the 16 millimeter. And so that actually helps with it a little bit because remember with the 16, I mentioned that because it turns so easily and it has that focus by wire, you run the risk of throwing it out of focus really easily. And I felt like this one was a little bit more stiff. And so it wasn't as easy to throw it out of focus. And on that, I will say I did appreciate using this manual focusing ring more than I did the 16 millimeter. So while I just utterly opposed that manual focus ring on the 16 millimeter, this was a little bit better, but the point still remains the same. I really, really wish, and actually the, the, the person that I've been emailing about these lens, I was like, yo, I would love if you guys made some cine lenses using these optics that wouldn't be just best world scenario. If you made some budget cine lenses for crops, even crop sensor lenses, with these optics, I would buy those in a heartbeat because these are some amazing lenses and the only downside for me is they're not manual. So yeah, Sigma, make it happen. Cine lenses, heartbeat. You would just get the adoration of every filmmaker out there. Just saying. So with that, the next con is the fact that there is no stabilization. Don't get me wrong, I do not expect stabilization at this price point necessarily. Honestly, with the lack of stabilization and for the chance of potentially having better autofocus, those are the two things that would drive me to potentially go with the Sony native glass. I've owned that 35 millimeter F1.8 from Sony and that is a great lens. The autofocus is clutch and it does have OSS. Now given, it is substantially more expensive. It's probably double the cost of this lens at this point. But like I said before, with the quality of this lens and the price tag that it has, I'm actually probably more inclined to look past these two cons. I'm one lately that I don't buy a ton of autofocus or even auto anything lenses. I love manual lenses. I would most likely buy this lens because it is such a good quality and really affordable. With those two cons out of the way, would I recommend this lens? And absolutely. I think this lens is an amazing upgrade from a kit lens. I think this is a great lens for interview scenarios. There's really not many people I wouldn't recommend this lens to. So hands down, I would recommend this lens for the quality and the price that it is. It is just a must have. And again, this is coming from me that I wasn't really excited about this lens. And it over the course of a few days just won me over. So definitely, if you have a chance to get your hands on this lens, look for it. And like I said, Sigma, please just make a cine version of this lens. Offer a cine version for like $400, somewhere around there. I'd buy it in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. Like as soon as you put it out, buy now, done. Cine version, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. So that's it for me. I hope this helped answer the question for you if this lens is worth buying, especially in 2020 in a market where there are some budget lenses that can do really good work. Yes, this lens is still worth buying in 2020, still worth having in your camera bag. Now, that being said, if you wanna buy this lens, I will have affiliate links below. Again, those are affiliate links and so it will help support the channel if you use those links, so thank you. Like I said last week, if you'd like to test this lens, I will also have an affiliate link to lensrentals.com. So use the link in the description and at checkout, use the promo code AnsonandCo15 to get 15% off your rental. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like that helps support the video and the success of the video. And if you're digging in the overall content from the channel, what I do here is a lot of budget camera gear reviews. And so if you're into that, consider subscribing. If you do wanna participate in the SD single space challenge, check out the video and I'll put it at the end of this video as well. This week, the entry I'm gonna feature is from Jordan Davis. I won't lie, I watched this at least two or three times because it just made my heart happy. It reminded me of like an 80s Folgers commercial. And you know what? Simpler times in life, kind of, if you're like me and you're like four in the 80s, but you know, whatever. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video for his entry. Give him some love in the comments. And as always, thank you for joining. Go and find your journey 
Go embrace life. Stay safe. Be happy. Wash those hands, and I'll see you here next time. Ah.